My mom and I love to get out in the garden together and prune and care for the plant. Something that you might think is gone and not worthy can come back to life with attention and care. My love and really passion for plants and greenery comes from my parents. My name is Margaret George and I am Megan's mom. She was a type of child that always wanted to be involved in everything. We had plants in the house and it was her responsibility for watering them and taking care of them. They taught me to care for something other than myself. They taught me patience. They also showed me the reward in watching something grow. All her life, her father played a big role, Michael. Her father would always say, do something that you like. My name is Megan Kane, and I'm the owner of the Zen Succulent. We're a neighborhood plant and gift shop that's located in both downtown Durham as well as downtown Raleigh. I based my business around my customer. And what I created with the Zen Succulent is a space that is cozy, where you're able to talk with the person behind the counter and have an honest conversation. When it comes to being a person that has a small business, you really want to focus on what your customer needs and wants. That's how we've stayed in business, going on five years in a physical location and being online for over nine years at this point. We are in my first workspace, the place I received my first order. It was $300 seed money we put down in the company. That was it. All the shelves are full with a variety of different containers. We bought up all the containers in that store and it was $300. This is one of my first designs that I entered into a state fair. And I always tell Megan, you still owe me $300. I started off on Etsy in 2012 with my single laptop in a garage waiting for my first order. I specialized in terrariums, those little worlds from day one, my mother was the person that was figuring out how we could potentially shift these. She was also the person that traveled up and down the East Coast with me from Brooklyn to Atlanta selling terrariums. From me having a bunch of plants in my trunk to now having two storefronts in the area, it's a beautiful thing. I'm so honored to be able to share what my parents taught me then, and I'm so grateful for it. As the business grew from doing one order to 10 orders a week to over 10,000 shipped throughout the United States throughout our first four years, I started to think maybe I can't be the only person working this in order I'm going to get burnt out. As a business owner, a lot of things fall on your shoulder. And if you're the only person continuously working on payroll, taxes, servicing customers to answering emails, you tend to kind of lose the magic of why you got into it and the spark. So that's when I sought out an actual small business accountant. When it comes to different tax breaks or deductions for small businesses, first think of what might be available in your local community. Reach out to other business owners to see what the hangups might be. Make sure that you are keeping every receipt. It helps you immensely when it comes to tax season and also when it comes to your application process for a lot of loans or grants. Don't be hesitant to pull out your tax ID information. I have a printout. I have at least 10 in each of my vehicles, so I can hand it out when I purchase wooden dowels or glassware. Having your vehicle listed in your business name could be an awesome way to deduct not only, of course, mileage, but also um, maintenance of your vehicle. Think about what you're able to accomplish and what does not bring you joy. Hand that off, if you can, to someone else that specializes in it. The history of downtown Durham is a history full of black entrepreneurship. Black Wall Street was a buzzing street where you would have businesses that were centered around the needs of the community as African Americans. That street still exists. However, only 4% of downtown businesses are black owned or minority owned. This is Black Wall Street mm -hmm. and you and maybe two other people 
our Black-owned businesses on this street. We get a lot of questions, are you Black-owned? And I say, we are, but we sell white dresses. <laughs> 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 and blush and, and, and champagne. I love it when I have a bride come in, especially a bride of color that asks, am I the owner? You see the uh, sense of this light bulb and the sense of pride that goes off. It's the exciting. same thing. Yep. Same thing. Love it. <laughs> There's so much more that could be done in downtown Durham. And I'm so glad to be someone that is pushing for more opportunities for black business downtown. My dad answered the phone and the first thing you have to lead with is that I'm all right, but this is what happened. When I woke up early that morning to the scenes of my storefront window completely shattered and people entering into the storefront, taking the things that I worked for, I felt a sense of helplessness. I felt angry that you would come into my space and disrespect it in such a way but as a black woman, I felt the pain where someone had to smash the windows to feel that they are being heard. She didn't cry or anything. She just rolled up her sleeves and we all got it done the next day. It stayed closed for a while, but she didn't, she didn't complain that, oh, I'm losing money. She was just saying that she's glad that no one was, was hurt. But as for the money part, she said that that'll come later on. If a few broken pots and broken windows are something that helps that process move forward, then let's break them all. It was overwhelming that we had community members, people that have walked by my shop but maybe haven't had a chance to come in, come in with a broom, wearing a mask to help sweep up. When the time comes where you might need help, how the community rallies around you, it fills your heart with so much good. During this pandemic, she said, my approach now has to be a little bit different. There were several small businesses that did not make it. I had to think of a way to keep my doors open in some sort of virtual way. Her dad was always sending her information on loans and grants. The payroll protection program, PPP loan, was just a little bit over $16,000 that would be eventually turned into a grant with the right paperwork. But because we are in a pandemic, there are so many changes that are happening with legislation in the Senate. They might annex it or take it away altogether. It is essential to stay in contact with your small business accountant or other small business owners to know what's going on in real time. The PPP loan has been a savior for us as a small business. I want to continue to learn my craft and grow within the community that I've created for myself. Seeing the treetops and how tall they're growing, it's like the growth of our city. It's about finding your spot and nurturing that opportunity. Megan always said this, Plant your dream. If you take care of it and water it, you will end up seeing it mature and come to life.